I'm right almost every single time, and only every so often does someone get one of those messages and click on a link. Every so often does my treasurer or my CFO get a message and click on the link. That's not good enough. So we need to look for a system that doesn't do a pretty good job most days of the week, but goes well beyond that. And so the way that we think about this problem is really centered around driving lots of context from multiple disparate sources of data and then combining them together. Uh, so for example, you can say that the content of the message itself is really very problematic. It looks like a real UNICEF message. I mean, the criminals may even be getting these themselves, copying and pasting, and doing their best to make it impossible even for someone at UNICEF to look and say, this is or is not me. That's a tough one in this case. On the other hand, if you know the source of this message is not UNICEF, or it's a dynamic server that probably belongs on a consumer broadband network, you'll have a much better chance, but that may not even be 100%. But the actual domain of this website was registered two days ago. I don't know if it was earthquake relief or Haiti relief, but two days ago, I mean, UNICEF may change their domain names from time to time. That's pretty suspicious. And then, of course, the name of the person who registered this, as well as where it's hosted, that starts to take what would normally be a anti-spam content problem that's hard to solve, and suddenly you've got a much, much bigger, much bigger context. We believe that at any given point in time, as we roll out these systems, criminals are actively figuring out the weak points. And that's why it's critical to have a system whereby you're able to assimilate new sources of data and add to this context framework. Originally, we had five or six sources of data back in 2002, 2003. Now we're at 200 sources of data where we're trying to combine all of this together and actively looking at what weaknesses are the criminals going after, and how do we get new sources of data and new forms of context to make it happen. We call that Cisco Security Intelligence Operations, the context of pulling in multiple disparate forms of security and building an operation to detect, protect, and then adapt. And again, whatever vendor you have, whatever vendor you're looking at, you need to be talking to them about this. If they tell you, we detect everything, we protect everything by our product, they really don't understand Cisco security. Because the nature of security is, you detect everything today, you protect everything today, that means there's a bunch of criminals out there going, we're not making any money. What should we do? Should we go get a job uh, slinging hamburgers or carrying luggage? Or should we go figure out how to come up with new attacks? And I think that's why you need to be talking to your vendors about what's the framework, and it can actually adapt when there's a new threat. Do they need three years to go build a new system? Or can they integrate new forms of data, new forms of security intelligence to do a better job? Um, and let me give you an example of where we have seen this succeed, not for an individual customer, but at a macro level. This is actually a graph, and you have to forgive the axis. This is actually the last couple years of spam volume. And again, we're not representing spam to be the worst problem on the internet, it's something everyone should spend tonight, up all night, thinking about. But it's a great proxy for criminal activity because it drives a lot of the revenue, and it's mostly sent from infected computers. So as the number of infected computers drops, the amount of spam drops, and that's a good sign for all of us. And we had seen a constant increase to the point here where we had 300 to 400 billion with a B, messages being sent every day on the internet. Insane. And part of that is, of course, the more we reject, the more the criminals just infect computers and send more mail. If only one in 100 messages gets through, they better send 10,000 messages. If one in 1,000 gets through, they better send 100,000 messages. And this had been the way it was until 2010. And again, this should say 2010, so you have to use your, your imagination there with me. And there we saw it drop all the way down to about 100 billion messages. That's still a ridiculous number. We still have further to go. But we believe that the techniques we've used from a technical point of view, success in international law enforcement, and some of the work we did where we actually figured out what's the full economic supply chain the criminals are using? Where are they sourcing the drugs from? How is their affiliate programs work? And some of those people getting arrested resulted in not just a better security solution, but actually resulted in a dramatic change in the security landscape on a global level. And that's what we're really focused on, is security intelligence operation driving those kinds of impacts to the point where we move beyond this for spam, we talk about malware, we talk about data theft, and all these areas. And the last thing that we introduced um, probably about 12 months ago that I thought was very noteworthy is, if you look at the system that I had, very simple for email and web, pretty easy to understand. What we're figuring out now is, how do you take email intelligence, 
and web intelligence and combining it with things like IPS intelligence. So for example, we may know that someone is visiting a website and there's an exploit. There's a PDF exploit, there is an Adobe exploit, there's a Flash exploit, firing. Well, that's very interesting from a web security perspective because that vector is coming over the web. On the other hand, we have hundreds of thousands of IPS boxes out there that are firing on these exploits every time. How do you take the IPS intelligence of where the exploits are with the web intelligence of where these exploits are with the email intelligence because somebody may have clicked on a link to go to that website to get exploited and basically use it all together? The concept B, there may be some new zero, zero day flying around that's hitting people in Australia that's hosted in the Philippines. Those of us here in the U.S. should not have to wait until it hits our organization to figure out about it and be protected. Those IPS boxes in Australia should be firing. Those web security boxes in Australia should be protecting from that attack. And that should be shared from those Cisco data sources back centrally and then pushed to all of your infrastructures so that, again, you're protected the moment it happens or before as opposed to having to wait too soon.